It's February 2016 and standing next to me is James Carpenter of the European Space Agency. James, you're involved on behalf of ESA with Luna 27. Please tell us about the Luna 27 mission to the Moon. Sure, so Luna 27 is a Russian mission. It's the third in a series of missions starting with the Luna 25 technology demonstrating lander then Luna 26, which is a lunar orbiter, and then Luna 27 is a larger, more capable lander with a broader suite of science instruments to land at the lunar poles in the 2020-2021 time frame. And uh, why go to the lunar poles? And is it North or South Pole? Is that uh, the, the lunar South Pole is the one that's targeted. I think both poles are interesting um, for the reason that they're very, very cold. We have areas which are permanently shaded and some of the coldest areas in the solar system. Um, and nearby we have um, areas of the surface and the subsurface which are also very cold. And these areas can trap volatiles, including water, um, for very, very long periods of time. And so we're interested in going to these regions to explore the poles as destinations for future exploration, to understand how much water there is, how much what the chemistry is, and how we can use those uh, as a resource for future exploration. Uh, as consumables for human habitations or as uh, hydrogen or oxygen for rocket fuel. Um, but also these volatiles are fundamentally scientifically interesting and important. They tell us about some important fundamental processes. So will Luna 27 land in somewhere that's a permanent shadow where we, we know there's water or is it going to take part luck and land somewhere where there's sunlight? Well, it will not land in a permanently dark region. Uh, to do that uh, is very challenging because you need to provide power. So we will land somewhere where there is solar illumination to provide power for the mission. Um, I don't think potluck is fair. I think we, will, we have an orbital data set which demonstrate that water ice uh, can be present within a meter or so of the surface at loss across vast um, areas in the polar regions. And so we will uh, target one of these areas where we have good reason to expect that there's water ice present. Um, I think that wherever we go in the polar regions, we're going to find something new. So there's no danger of not doing that, um, but we wouldn't go to a permanently shaded region. Okay, well, good luck with the mission, James. Thanks for talking to me. Thank you, Dave.